next hell is talking about uh, live participatory ads. The paranormal. A little bit different, a little bit different <laughs> from what we've been listening to today. One of the people I spoke to said, uh, with the paranormal, why is the key word? And if I ask myself that question today, then I would say, why for me, the payoff for me in doing this study, is about understanding a certain kind of cultural participation and getting a deeper sense of what an audience is to me when they do participate in certain kinds of live, powerful, collective events. Um, and uh, just very briefly, um, the, the book starts out with this, this key basic point, which is that the paranormal has gone mainstream. And I used this um, photograph in the opening to the book because uh, I was out um, shopping with my sisters at this supermarket in a town in North Wales, where I come from. And uh, we came across not just one, but several psychic magazines on sale uh, with milk, bread, and eggs. And so this was one of the key points to the opening of the book, is the paranormal has gone mainstream. And to play on the notion of culture is ordinary, I wanted to make a very basic point that culture is both ordinary and extraordinary. And it's beholden upon those of us in media communication and cultural studies to try to understand some sense of uh, what that means. So uh, this is a popular cultural ethnography that asks what is a paranormal or magical experience. And by magical, I mean magical entertainment, magical experience. And through a novel cultural formation, such as uh, paranormal or magical entertainment, I argue they go beyond the immediate reality of text or artifact to a more collective, self-conscious engagement with varieties of experiences. And uh, the focus here is on cultural participation in live events, live theater, and live medium demonstrations. So uh, one of the things that uh, it made me think about is, what is an audience? Of course, the question uh, in film studies, what is cinema, helped to define film theory and an understanding of film. And it's something that uh, um, Robert C. Allen, in his historical work on uh, cinema, asked himself uh, by saying, what was cinema? And so in his uh, um, history of movie going in North Carolina, which is called Going to the Show, he talks about the sociality and spatiality of movie going. And he says, what he learned through his study was that this raised really key issues for him about the study of cinema as both text and social and cultural experience. And what his key point in his historical work was that cinema, as, it, as we know it today, uh, was not what uh, was the key focus of his historical work. It was much more going to the show for the people involved, the social and spatiality of the experience. Now, this historical work... Um, really inspired me because it made me think, first of all, well, what was an audience? And uh, I went back and looked historically um, through reading some great works by, for example, Donald Sassoon um, about a history of uh, uh, popular culture um, and, and other key books on um, uh, um, uh, media audiences and, and history. And, and clearly what was an audience is really complex and broken up into all sorts of different things. And it's certainly not what I understand as an audience today. So for example, even the notion of being attentive is completely different <laughs> much, much earlier on. Um, so it, it made me open up my, my, my understanding of well, what is an audience. Um, and certainly it also highlighted for me the importance of, um, for, for any work on the paranormal and magical entertainment, was to think about the profession of mediums and magicians during the key moment in the development of the, of the profession in the uh, late 19th century, which was closely connected to the selling of cultural experiences. These were absolutely mutual uh, um, things going on at the same time. And that, that was really important for me to begin to reconceptualize my understanding of an audience for, for, the, for the things I was looking at, not as spectators or viewers, but as participants in this process 
of cultural participation. Um, and for my novel cultural formations that I looked at, these people co-perform and co-produce their experiences. Indeed, I would go as far as to say there would be no magical entertainment, there would be no medium demonstration without the audience. They are the show. They cannot perform without them. <clears throat> um, so it is about a particular type of cultural participation, and of course there are many different types that we have to get our heads around. It is about rational and effective engagement, primarily about the significance of the live moment and emotional experiences. And <laughs> Raymond, <laughs> just in the last panel, had this fantastic quote, um, I don't know who it's by, but he said, where there's passion, there's profit. <laughs> and this is absolutely the number one outcome of everything I'm studying in this book on the paranormal. Huge industry, huge industry. And it's absolutely based on where there's passion, there's profit. <clears throat> so, who said it? <laughs> the man who created the Champions League format. <laughs> see, the importance of sports. You can see an absolute correlation here with what I'm talking about in sports. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, I come up with this, the idea of the audience as the show, explored in relation to uh, historical and contemporary examples from public entertainment, in particular stage magic and medium demonstrations, which involve this high degree of audience participation. A medium, or psychic, who performs in public needs an audience not only to watch or listen, but to actually make the performance happen. An audience with a medium co-produces belief in spirit communication. An audience with a magician co-produces a sense of wonder with the performer. And as I said, in a very real sense, the audience is the show. So uh, here's a quote from um, a uh, very popular magician that I, I focused on called Derren Brown, who also would say he was a mentalist in the Victorian tradition of mentalism, also called psychological entertainment. Um, a long, wonderful history of psychological entertainment um, to take a look at. And he says, um, magic isn't about fakes and switches and dropping coins in your lap. It's about entering into a relationship with a person whereby you can lead him or her economically and deftly to the experience and event as magical. It's a really, really interesting professional view of what he's doing. Now, the wonderful novelist uh, Hilary Mantle um, wrote a, a, a great book called Beyond Black, um, a novel about a, a medium. But she was reviewing Darren Brown's book, Tricks of the Mind, a best-selling non-factual book for many years in Britain, and he's got a new book out. Um, and she was reviewing the book, and she says, when a trick is performed, the harder you watch, the more you may miss. <laughs> you become committed to its process. You are complicit, and your attention moves as directed. It is natural when we are surprised to exaggerate the oddity and wonder of our experience. Beautifully put by her in a review of Darren Brown and his particular style of psychological entertainment. Um, and one of my participants talking about Darren Brown says, it's like you want to believe it. You want to be the one. I want to believe in magic. I want to be the one he calls me up on stage. It makes me feel to have this sense of wonder, even though I know there's no such thing as magic. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing to see um, with his live shows. Now, just to turn really briefly to um, mediumship, an audience with a, a professional medium brings their own skepticism to the performance. It's really important to emphasize that. If you think audiences go to see a medium demonstration believing you're wrong, they come in hugely skeptical. It's built in to the profession itself and the way, what they know about the punters, <laughs> the ones they're going to pay for some sort of paranormal experience. And Peter Lamont, who's a um, uh, social psychologist and historian, says, ostensibly, psychic phenomena is not only unusual and surprising, but inherently anomalous, by its title, right? 
Few people view such events without suspicion, and many reject them as highly unlikely, if not impossible. So from the very, very beginning in the 19th century, scepticism was built into the entire profession and the way you engage with it as an audience. Um, again, Hilary Mantle in her novel, Beyond Black, her, her um, character of a, of a medium says, this is how you handle them, the punters, the audience. You tell them the small things, the personal things, the things no one else could really know. <clears throat> By this means, you make them drop their guard. Only then will the dead begin to speak. On a good night, you can hear the scepticism leaking from their minds like a low hiss <laughs> uh, um, uh, of a tire deflating. <laughs> um, how much more time do I have left? Six minutes. Six minutes? Okay. Um, so, t for me to think about this, I came up with the metaphor of a conductor and orchestra. And, and this helped me to begin to see how my audiences were participating you know, acutely in these magical experiences and these paranormal experiences. They were making the experiences happen for them. Um, and uh, in the case of a magician or medium, the performer and audience commit to participation in the creative process. And there's a repertoire of responses in the uh, professional as a, as a conductor. And there's also a repertoire of responses in the audience as the orchestra. There are emotional, physical, cognitive, psychological, and spiritual responses going on in this. But emotions are primary to the way audiences play themselves, with the professional conductor beautifully playing them for it. If you see a bad medium demonstration, or you see a bad magician, you will know immediately how much the audience needs a, a talented um, performer to make them play themselves and their emotions in this way. Um, so there's been some criticism about cultural participation. This is a fantastic play by David Mamet, The Shawl, um, which is about the skepticism and belief around uh, mediumship and psychics. Um, I really encourage you to go and see it. And if you see this play, you, the audience, are completely put into this highly participatory mode in terms of do you believe or don't you believe? And the whole play is constructed around that. Um, but nevertheless, um, just really briefly, it made me think about cloakroom communities by uh, Bauman, this perspective of the distance audience in his notion of cloakroom communities to explain the limits of collectivity and cultural participation. And he crudely, I would say, he perceived audiences silently watching media spectacles who may be seated together but ultimately remain alone. Now, for me, this is a quite sad view of audiences, and it raises the question, why would people go to the theatre to begin with? Um, and cloakroom communities suggest audiences do so because they're mistaken in believing in the illusion of togetherness that, for example, theatre might offer. But, as producers and stage designers of theatre know, an awareness of the sociality and spatiality of theatre is crucial. Um, they, um, there are performers on stage, but the audiences are also performing in so many different ways, spatial ways, emotional ways. Um, uh, which I think is very important to remember. <clears throat> um, and I, I just want to finish here. I'm not talking about a suspension of disbelief. That is the, what's put forward in all the theories at the moment around re-enchantment, which I like a lot, but they absolutely subscribe to the notion of suspension of disbelief. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the puppet master, the old mesmerism act. I'm not talking about that either. This isn't equal in power relations. It is very much <laughs> emotions mean, you know, passion means um, profit for these professionals. Um, and there's a lot of scams and fraud and awful things going on around this, um, this area. But I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about this kind of collective engagement, this, this way of playing that goes with the conductor and orchestra. And, and ultimately, um, People feel alive in this experience. And this is why they will pay again and again and again for these kinds of experiences where they make them happen. <clears throat>